everyone, welcome back to my channel and today we have another update on the Lockwood situation. So Lockwood has finally responded to the allegations, however there's also some things I want to talk about that I've looked into. I've looked a lot into the company and different investments and stuff like that. So we're going to talk about some stuff that happened in the past first just to give some context. If you guys haven't seen my other videos on this, you really should because this video won't make as much sense otherwise. But we're going to get on into the past stuff and then I will talk about the response that has been given to the allegations from the workers union. So without further ado, let's get into it. So I've been looking into the different investments that Lockwood have got over the years and I found out that quite a lot of companies have invested in Lockwood, which is normal. but. The recency of the investments kind of was a bit interesting to me. So I'm going to start off with talking about Tencent, which I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. I think so. I don't know. Um, they are a Chinese tech giant and they gave a $25 million investment to Abakin Life around about a year ago. So obviously that's a lot of money, but I understand a lot of that will go towards wages. A lot of that will go towards developing the game. I get that. What I'm trying to say though is that that is a lot of money for all of a sudden Avakin to be redundant, you know? As well as that, they have other investors such as Navator Partners, Unity's co-founder David Helgeson and CCP Game CEO Hilmar Peterson, I think it is. So they've had a lot of investors and I want to point out that the Unity co-founder invested in this. Now Unity is a massive games developer. Well, not quite a games developer, it's more of a game engine. So they're very, very involved in the gaming industry. And as well as that, I actually found out that when opening offices, one of the people who was hired to lead offices was a team that used to work at Ubisoft. Ubisoft is the mind behind games like the Assassin's Creed series and a load of other games. They're very big in the industry. So I actually didn't know that a games company such as Unity and Ubisoft were all involved in this. I think that's insane. I always just thought of Lockwood as just kind of a little company, but it turns out that it's even bigger than what we could imagine with the amount of investments and partners that they've been working with. As well as that, um, it has actually been spread around four offices. So Nottingham is kind of where it started and then they branched out into Newcastle, then Lithuania and Portugal. So it is now a worldwide company, although it isn't so much talked about the whole Portugal um, side of things or Lithuania, as most of the layoffs have been in the UK, or at least all of them that have been publicised have been. However, it is possible that there are other ones in Portugal and such that we just haven't known about. So the point I'm trying to make here is that quite recently, a year ago, they got massive investments from a lot of leaders in the industry. They've been working with a lot of leaders in the industry and they've branched out to four different offices and made their company from one little office to four worldwide. Now, that requires quite a lot of money. So if they were able to afford all this, then how come they're having such a hard time and needing to lay off people so urgently? That's just something to think about while I talk about the rest of it. But let's get into the actual response that the developer slash CEO of Avakin has given. So the CEO of Lockwood's last name, I'm pretty sure is Bjorsen. It is a, I'm pretty sure it's a foreign surname, so I don't want to offend anyone by saying it wrong, but that's just what I can make out of it, Bjorsen. So I'm just calling that for now. If it comes to my attention, I've said it wrong, then I'll change it. So. Bjorsen has said that prior to the outbreak of COVID-19, Lockwood invested in doubling the size of its team in line with growth, but the pandemic slowed that growth trajectory. So the company needed to refocus its strategy and reduce team size accordingly. The decision to make redundancies is never easy, he wrote. I know it is incredibly hard for people to have to leave their jobs, and I'm truly sorry that we had to make this tough decision. The CEO confirmed that 20 of Lockwood's 200 staff will be let go, but added that the company has tried to safeguard the jobs of as many of our team as possible and redeploy people where they can. 
Lockwood is currently undergoing a consultation process in which eight people have requested voluntary redundancy. Six have been offered roles elsewhere in the company, four of which have accepted. So just to break that down into little bite-sized pieces, basically he is defending his actions saying that it's, it's hard for the people and he sympathises with that, but it's a tough decision that he's had to make. Now, the issue with this is this. If it was just a normal redundancy, laying people off, I can understand that, especially when they go through rough patches. That happens in all companies. It's happened to people I know. It's happened to family members, friends. I completely understand that. What I do not understand is the fact that they are so apparently desperate to lay off these people that they did it illegally and without the proper notice that they're supposed to and right before Christmas as well. So I don't know, it's a bit fishy but we'll keep going because there is more to the response. So apparently early into the process on how to proceed, um, the union basically told Lockwood that they should hold um, conversations with people about the risk of redundancy and what it meant to them and this is the quote from the CEO early into the process the IWGB union requested we restart our consultation process to consult with the whole company rather than with individuals we welcomed their suggestion and acted on it straight away restarting the process some of you going through the process will know that we've been happy to have union representatives to sit in on one-to-one -one consultation meetings. So this is a little bit weird because apparently the union has been involved with the, um, the, the layoffs and apparently the union has told Lockwood Industry how they are supposed to lay off people in a legal and morally correct manner. And there's kind of a, a clash here because the CEO says that Lockwood has completely listened to the union and done exactly what they told them to do. But the very fact that the union is suing now the Kim, I don't understand why they do that if, you know, Lockwood actually followed the rules. So it doesn't really make a lot of sense. And I just kind of want you guys to think, <laughs> I mean... The, the union, they don't have any reason to lie about this, do they? They don't get paid more if they shut down companies or anything like that. All they're doing is doing their job trying to make sure people are paid fairly, treated fairly, all those type of things. The union doesn't really have any reason to lie about stuff like this. Whereas it's in the CEO's best interest to kind of tro cover up things and, you know, try and make them look good for Avakin. So just kind of take everything with a little pinch of salt. So there's also <laughs> something that I addressed um, was the investments because I found it so weird that these people have just gotten in so many investments and yet they were giving out so many redundancies. I thought that was a bit strange and it, apparently it's not just me who thought that was weird because some of the team have raised questions about whether they could use the investment to avoid the redundancy. That's what the CEO says. And his response was, we cannot do this. In order to thrive into the future, we have to build a sustainable, profitable and successful business. And sadly, that means reducing our team. Now, I understand from a business point of view why he would reduce the team because it's less wages for him to pay and everything. That's fine. What I don't understand is he's basically just <laughs> admitted that they do have the money to keep these people in employment, but they decided to do it illegally. So in this situation, what you'd usually expect is a CEO to go, okay, next year, because remember this all happened in around about December, he should have went, okay, in 2022, I'm going to lay off these people because we need to profit more in the company. That's completely fine. I completely understand that but it's the fact that he acted as if the company was just instantly bankrupt and just <laughs> immediately went to firing people within, you know, about two weeks of Christmas, I think it was. That's where the issue is. So he's also said that he's really sorry to see team members leave Lockwood and I know the period will be hard for those leaving and unsettling for those staying. The tough decisions we take are to safeguard the future of our business and to secure the roles of as many people at Lockwood as possible. 
Jorgsen concluded by emphasising the company is talking to all our teams about this decision and holding group meetings to answer any staff questions over the coming days. I'm not too sure about all this. If you saw my last um, video about it, I did say that, um, that uh, there's a lot of people saying how bad Avakin was to work with or Lockwood Publishing rather, the people who made Avakin and saying that the team was never consulted and everything. I, I don't know how much I believe, to be honest. Personally, in my opinion, I think that there's something really weird going on here. It's, it's a bit strange. I personally believe that the CEO is basically just telling people what they want to hear. Because at the end of the day, he's a very rich man. We weren't expecting him to... I, I don't expect him to keep these people in a job forever. But I would at the very least expect the proper notice to be given to people before firing them. Especially right before Christmas. So, I'm sorry, I just, I'm not letting all of them off the hook with this one. Obviously, you guys can make up your own minds about what you think about it, but me personally, I just, I'm not buying it. <laughs> I just think that he's kind of playing God a little bit and thinking, this is my company, if I want to fire these people, I can, without warning, without, you know, doing it the legal way. He just thinks, oh, I want to get more profit. Therefore, I will fire workers. That's the thought process. He doesn't think about, hey, maybe I should wait until after Christmas, or hey, maybe I should give these people the respect they deserve by actually telling them and giving them their legal notice. Like I said, this isn't just a moral issue. It is literally illegal what they have done. <laughs> As for whether they'll be sued or not, I still can't say definitively. It is going closer towards that way however there has been no official news and I'm not going to tell you guys oh they're going to get sued or something when I don't know I'd rather be honest with you and let you know you know everything that I know <laughs> and I have looked into it I've done a bit of a deep dive I've been doing a bit of a deep dive on the CEO himself I've done a lot of research for it and so far I just can't find anything um, about whether they're getting sued or not because the union probably hasn't even decided yet so I will let you guys know, as usual, when there are any updates to this and whether they will get sued or not. But like I said, I'm not going to make a video saying, oh, they're going to get sued when I don't actually know that. I'm just going to try and be as honest as possible with my content. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a comment on how you feel about the situation. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more of this content. If you haven't already, please go check out those other videos that I did talking about this. It will make this video make a lot more sense. But like I said, hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.